You know, I don't think anybody goes into ministry because they think in their minds, if I'm in ministry, then surely things will go well with my family and we'll have plenty of money in the bank. I know they don't think that. And we won't get cancer and we won't have car accidents. And yet I think perhaps there's a part of us that deep down, deeper than we realize, we have this sense that, God, if I am at work for you, among your people, then you're gonna take care of me. And you won't let these really hard things happen to me. But I'm not sure we get that at all from the scriptures. When I look at 2 Corinthians, the life of Paul, this man of God who wrote so much of the New Testament, he was a man who was giving his whole life. His, his aim in life was to share in the sufferings of Jesus, to preach Christ crucified. And yet, what do we see in 2 Corinthians 11 about his life? In that passage, he lists all the things that he's experienced. He's been uh, whipped five times, uh, 39 lashes. He's been stoned. He's been in prison. He's been cold. He's been hungry. He has been criticized. He carries the weight of all the churches. When I read that, I have to think, did Paul think to himself, you know what, God? I'm working real hard for you. Why don't you send all those stonings and those shipwrecks to someone else? And yet, when we go to the next chapter, Paul says, I was given a thorn in the flesh. Um, I wonder if he thought, come on, Lord, give it to someone else. I've suffered enough. Perhaps you feel that way in your life of ministry, that now this hard thing has happened, this thorn. For Paul, it was something that was an, a chronic, agonizing pain. Maybe you have that. And maybe like Paul, you've done what Paul did, which is he says, I begged the Lord three times to take it away. He, he begged him to take it away. And then he asked again, and then he asked again. And I think that perhaps what Jesus said to him was probably not what he wanted to hear. At least I think it's not what you and I want to hear when we go to God with this righteous, rigorous, repeated prayer. And that was that Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient. My strength or my power is made perfect in weakness. It kind of seems on the surface to not be what we're looking for, and yet it's everything we could ask for. He's saying, in the midst of the pain that I'm not going to take away, my grace is gonna be enough for you in that. I'm going to deliver my grace to you in the form and the timing and the quantity in which you need it. I am going to be enough for you. So I just say to my friends who are in ministry, maybe you're feeling really weak today, really worn out, just so tired of the struggle, so tired of the conflict, so tired of watching your husband get called away from dinner, get called back from vacation to do a funeral, to face another contentious church meeting. Here is the promise of Christ to you in the midst of that weakness that the power of Christ will rest on you. The same power that enabled him to endure insults. Remember that? They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It enabled Jesus to endure hardships. He says, foxes have holes and birds have their nests, but the Son of Man doesn't even have anywhere to lay his head. He endured persecution. They mocked him and spit at him and nailed him to a cross. He endured calamities. What must it have been like on that day that came to him and told him that John the Baptist's head had been cut off? It says he went away to a secluded place. He withdrew. Jesus knows all of these things and the promise of the scriptures is that his power will come to rest on you. So as you face insults, insults about your ministry, insults about you personally, the power of Christ will rest on you. As you face hardship, things at your church are getting harder 
not easier. You thought by now it would be getting easier. The power of Christ has come to rest on you. As you face persecution, the people who used to be beside you, maybe you feel are now against you. As you face calamity, the worst thing happening in the church, perhaps more significantly in your family, to your kids, the Lord says, my power will come to rest on you the power to make you content. So hear this promise, my grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in weakness.